Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. Welcome to another very basic tutorial. Uh, we're, uh, we're coming close to the end here. This is all part of the basic training series and this is step nine, exporting your masterpiece. So really, really cool stuff. We'll be covering uh, a couple of ways to export, whether it's, uh, it's a video clip, uh, a project, or, or just a still. And we're also gonna be uh, showing how to export something with uh, transparency, with an alpha channel. So the reason why I have all these fireworks here I mean, it, it makes it look flashy and, you know, a little bit more interesting than just some boring text. But also, if you noticed, if you're familiar with the uh, Action Essentials pack from Video Copilot, which is uh, over here, it's a great, great pack, it all comes pre-keyed. What that means is all these elements are pretty much just drag and drop. So I just use some charge elements there, and if I drag and drop this in, you can see that, well, let me uh, get to a good spot here. You can see that it's already pre-keyed. All I had to do was drag and drop it in, and uh, it's uh, it's ready to go. So that's a cool thing to uh, to know when you're exporting certain things. For example, I uh, I make some pre-made uh, assets that I use every time for tutorials, uh, such as this one. Whenever you see any kind of lower thirds that pops up, that's a pre-made um, you know video clip that I that I've done and I've exported with uh, with an Alpha channel, so that I can just drag it and drop it, and it's uh, it's ready to go. So let's start with the very basics here. Let's say that you know you don't want to export this uh, whole three minute and forty five uh, seconds composition, and you only want the beginning here. Well, an easy way to do this instead of going under composition, composition settings, and changing the duration over there, you can actually grab this uh, this work area knob, drag it in, and then you right click on that that area over here and say trim comp to work area. And now your entire composition is of that size that you uh, that you specified. So it's a cool little trick. So now we uh, we have this uh, you know these fireworks going off and stuff, and we're ready to export this uh, this section of the comp. So anyways, to start off, let's put the resolution of full. So you know this is a good way to uh, make sure that everything is uh, how you want it to be. I usually work with uh, third or quarter resolution just because my computer is really slow. But uh, you know you can switch it back to full resolution once you're ready to render. I'm actually not sure if uh, if this affects only the preview or if it actually does affect your, your render. I don't believe so. I never really tested it out, but just in case, I always put it to full. But anyways, uh, with that aside, in older versions of After Effects, you're going to want to go under Composition, and then it says, uh, you know, Add to Render Queue. But um, I believe in CS6, uh, you can just go under File, Export, Add to Render Queue. So pretty much the same thing. And once we click that, we go under our render queue panel over here, and we have a couple options that we can mess around with. Uh, usually, I just leave everything in uh, best settings. I usually mess around with this. For more advanced stuff, uh, you know, especially if you have a producer that's telling you some specifics, you can go ahead and change certain things in here, but we don't really need any of that. Let's go under uh, output module, and let's click on lossless here. And we're going to change the format from QuickTime to H.264. Now again, remember, we are looking at exporting this as a finalized project. So this is something that you're getting ready to uh, either upload to YouTube or, you know, whatever the case may be. So let's put that to H.264, which is a decent uh, compression format. And then we're going to go under Format Options. Yours may look a little bit different from, uh, from these settings. Uh, I believe After Effects actually remembered my last render settings so you can take a look at, at what I have and this is uh, pretty much ideal so what I did here I don't know what you're gonna have it um, set to but set the profile to high and I believe it starts with uh, a level of 4.0 or 4.1 but you want to change that to 5.1 and um, over here in the bitrate settings uh, this is the most important part if you want to get some some good quality uh, you can change it to CBR which stands for constant bitrate and you can put it to something like 10. Um, YouTube usually compresses it down to six or eight. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure they're always changing that. So by the time this video is up, who knows? They're coming out with uh, 60 frames a second and all kinds of new stuff. So I'm not sure how true that is. But anyways, uh, with 10, you, you should be more than fine with YouTube and, and pretty much anything. I mean, you know, most DSLRs that you're recording with are probably, uh, you know, recording with a, a bit rate of eight. Uh, but I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but 10, is fine. Uh, you know, you can push it and put it to 11 or 12. I mean, you can go crazy, uh, even up to, I've seen a guy on YouTube put it to like 100, 120, and it's going to take hours to, uh, to render just a few minutes. So it all depends on how much time you have to render. And, and obviously, you know, the more you push this, uh, this bitrate number up, 
the, the better the quality, but also the more uh, time it will take to render. So anyways, with that being set this way, uh, let's click OK. And then we are almost done. We can leave this to RGB and everything is fine here. And then if you want to output your audio, just check over here, audio output. And these settings should be fine. So 48 is pretty standard. Um, and you want stereo. Usually I don't mess around with these, uh, these, these settings over here, unless, like I said, you have uh, someone that's telling you, hey, I want this specifically. And, but if not, I mean, this should, be, this should be fine. So click OK with that, and then click OK to accept all these changes. Now, the last thing that you want to do is uh, tell After Effects where to output this. So once you click on this, this window will pop up. And now I'm going to name this My Masterpiece. That's something Kanye West would say. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. All right, then hit save. So now you can see that it updated over here. And then once we're ready to go, just hit render. And you can see this yellow progress bar. And uh, you know it tells you uh, how much it has rendered. Down here you see estimated time remaining. So it's just telling me that in one minute it should be done. And this is the time that it's uh, that has elapsed so far. And let's say you gotta you know run somewhere with your computer, you can always pause this render and continue some of the time. Or let's say, I don't know, you're happy with it um, rendered up to this point, you can always hit stop. So that's pretty much uh, all that's going on in the render queue here. It's again, really, really basic stuff. And there we go, it's, uh, it's about to finish here and you're gonna hear my favorite sound in the world. Well, you can't hear it because I have headphones on right now. I heard it, but yeah, I'm always happy when I hear that because that means my, uh, my rendering is done, and usually the type of renders that I do take hours and hours, so I'm always excited to see what the outcome was. All right, so that was pretty much the standard way to just export pretty much uh, pretty much anything, you know, that's ready to upload to YouTube, and uh, the quality should be really, really good. Let's go back to our comp here, but let's say now we want to just export a um, a still. You can take a snapshot over here, but if you want a little bit more control, you can go under Composition, Save Frame As file and this will bring you back to your uh, your render queue and uh, current settings is fine I would usually go under Photoshop you can export it as a Photoshop sequence but if you're just trying to export a still I'm gonna go under JPEG sequence and I'm gonna go under RGB uh, whenever you see here RGB or RGB uh, plus alpha when you see RGB plus alpha that means it's uh, going to render the colors and the alpha channel as well. So if anything's transparent, uh, it renders that information with it. Now we're gonna see this in just a little bit with, uh, with what I told you in the beginning of the video, but for now, we're just exporting just a still. So this is fine, you know, you can choose JPEG, you can even choose uh, PNG over here, uh, you know, whatever works for you. And uh, I usually don't mess around with any of these settings, you know, format option, you can push the quality up or, you know, bring it to whatever uh, works for you usually eight or nine is should be fine click OK and click OK then again tell it where to export this to and uh, let's say still hit save render boom it's uh, it's done right away so this was really fast to render because we're just rendering just one frame the still all right so now let's uh, let's take a look at how to export something with uh, with transparency with the alpha channel embedded so you know it goes back to what we were saying we can just drag and drop it and uh, it's ready to go. So um, cool little thing to see what is transparent in your uh, composition here is going on this little button down here, toggle transparency grid, click on that. You can see that um, our background is actually not black, it's, uh, it's transparent, that's because we don't have a background. You know, if you want a black background, you can uh, create a new solid and uh, there's your black background. But this actually works for this example. Uh, this way we have you know, just some elements and we have some transparency here. So what I'm going to do is go under File, Export, Add to Render Queue. So, so far it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, leave Best Settings, go under Lossless, and this time QuickTime is actually a good format. That's what we're going to be using. Go under Format Options and change the video codec from Animation to Apple ProRes 444. Another quick tip, if you are exporting out of After Effects and you're going to be importing it into another program uh, such as Premiere or Final Cut or whatever, uh, you know, let's say you're exporting a title sequence or a visual effects shot, it's always good to put it to Apple ProRes 
leave the quality the best. This way, you know, you have some very minimal compression and you still have some really good quality so that you can still uh, mess around with it in, a, in another another program. So, you know, instead of X.264, which is a good format for uh, for finalizing your project, you know, if you're still going to use this in other uh, programs, I suggest you use Apple ProRes 422 or no compression at all. You know, that's just a little side tip. But let's go back to Apple ProRes 444. 4444. 444 four, four times. Okay. Click that. Uh, the difference between Apple Pro is 4422. Four, there's so many numbers. And Apple Pro is 4444 four, 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 is that this one has uh, the ability to render out an alpha channel, and this one simply doesn't. So that's that's the main difference over there. I hope I'm not getting too, uh, too nerdy on you and you're still following along. Um, I usually just put the quality to 95. I don't know. Just because. Just Click OK. And now over here, you got to remember, I forget to do this every time I try to export something like this. You got to change from RGB to RGB plus alpha. So now it's going to render both the colors and the transparent and the, you know, the alpha information in, uh, in your composition. You know, you can always uh, put audio output like before. Click OK. And now if I go to export it, my masterpiece. Uh, I don't know, plus alpha, so that we know that it has transparency. Click save and click render. And you notice that the render time was a lot faster. And this is, uh, you know, this is a bit weird. I think the file size might be bigger. Yeah. The one with the alpha information is a bigger file size than the one without it, but it's faster to render because it has a lot less uh, color information to process. And uh, let's create a new composition. New composition, these things are fine. And click OK. Now, just to show you that we did render it with the alpha, let's make a solid. Let's, uh, let's add like a ramp effect. I don't know, this is just an example to show you that there is transparency. Uh, let me go, I don't know, let's make this interesting. All right. Now let's import the clip that we rendered out with the alpha channel embedded in it. Let's drag, we can drop it in here. And uh, as I let go, you can see that we actually exported it with uh, our, you know, with the alpha channel. So it's ready to uh, be drag and dropped anywhere and in any project file. This even works with uh, with Premiere. Should work with Final Cut. No, I'm not sure. I hate Final Cut. Just, just use Premiere. I hope I don't get any dislikes for just saying that. But yeah, uh, I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys. And um, again, I really encourage you to uh, both uh, check out Action Essentials and Video Copilot in general. It's a great source for for really, uh, for really anything uh, VFX related. And also check out my channel um, if you missed any of these tutorials. I've uh, made it easier for you guys to navigate through all the 10 steps. Uh, I've put them all on my website step after step so you can check all those out. I still have yet to do this one, but uh, check in next week and it should be up. So thank you guys so much for watching. If it's your first time on this channel, uh, please subscribe. I have a lot of new content coming up. And if this was helpful, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up and share this with anybody that might need this. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Core Productions, and I will see you next time. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers.